two copper wires joined together carry a current. So you need to know, this one is a common misconception. If you have a current coming in, you must have the same current here and the same current here and the same current here. Same current. You cannot have charge just appearing, disappearing. So same current. Keep that in your mind. Now we go to the other part of the question. Wire P has diameter D. So this is diameter D and this is two times. So diameter 2D. Okay, so the rest I'll just rub off for now. What's the ratio average drift speed of the free electrons? So when you see drift speed, you see diameter, you should think of the equation that is written in the first page of the uh, formula booklet in physics. So in the booklet, it's written as A and V Q, but I remember it fondly as Nave equation. Charge carriers flowing inside a conductor will cause a current. So we are looking for the drift speed. So if we can find an equation for V, okay, this will be VI over NAE. It's a lot of terms. Can we simplify a little bit? If I want to find V drift speed is proportional to, what do I write there? What are the things that are different when you are in the wire P and wire Q? Is the current the same in both? Yes, we just said that. So that's constant. So I just make a list here. Our constants is I. Okay, what's N? N in the equation means number density. Number density, uh, it depends on the material. Uh. So if they are both copper wires, they have the same number density. Yeah, like a number of what means? Number density means how many charge carriers can you have? Copper is the element that has a certain number of free electrons for each atom. So... If they're both copper, they have the same number density. Okay, so this is constant also. A. A is... What is A? Area. Nah. Imagine this is a 2D thing. So area is not constant because you have a changing cross-section area. Okay, side note. In case you have forgotten, area is pi r square or pi d square over 4. E. What is E? E is a constant the charge of an electron, so 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That's a constant law. You can look in the front page of the thing. So at the end of the day, what is changing is there's V that's changing. There is A that's changing. That's it. So you can simplify the whole equation to get ready for your ratio. Uh, A is proportional to D square hall. So I'm just going to use D square. So 1 over D square. So far, so good. Okay. So now that you have an equation for the drift velocity, now you can do your ratio. You see, you are dividing drift speed over drift speed. So you can do something like this. Drift speed in P over drift speed in Q equals 2. Now we use what we have discovered earlier, the ratio, okay? So 1 over D square for P and 1 over D square for Q. If I rearrange this, this will be, this will be D square Q over d square p. Okay, so d square in q is two times bigger. So you need to know, oh, this is two times square. And d in p is just d square. So we simplify a bit this ratio. What do we get? Up there will be 4, 4d square over d square. Oh. So 4d square over d square. Let me move this up so my head doesn't block it. d square divided by d square is gone. So all that's left is 4. Oh, that's it. Four. Okay. So four is the, is the answer. And that's correct. So whenever you see ratio like this, you find an equation for whatever you want to ratio. Or even better, you simplify into a proportionality relationship kind of equation. And then you don't have to worry about so many terms inside to cancel out. Though. Okay. And that's how you can find the ratio at the end. Should be a number. All the other unknowns should cancel out. Okay, so that is all for this question. I will see you in the next one.